Hey guys, I'm Joe, you're watching Theo Joe Tech. In this video, I want to hopefully quickly go over some of the most common types of monitor panels. So the next time you go out to buy a new computer monitor, you'll probably be able to at least basically understand the different types of panels types that you'll come across. And specifically, I'm going to go over IPS, TN, VA, and OLED type panels. Starting off, we have TN panels. This stands for Twisted Pneumatic and TN panels are generally the cheapest to manufacture. Most low-end monitors are going to be TN panels. However, there are some advantages for where they can be used in higher-end monitors for certain applications, usually specifically gaming. And that's because TN panels are usually the fastest types. They have the lowest response time and they often have very high refresh rates and so if you're gaming and you need really fast reaction times and you don't want a lot of input lag, a TN panel is usually the way to go. Although IPS panels, there are some that are coming out that are starting to compete. But the main disadvantages of TN panels is that they ha are really bad at color representation. They have pretty bad viewing angles. So if you're using a TN panel for a professional application like photo editing. It's really not going to be that good because what you're seeing is not really going to be representative of the color that the video or photo actually is. Next we have VA. This is vertical alignment. This is kind of like the middle of the road type panel. It's a little bit more expensive than TN but not quite up there with IPS. The main advantage of this over TN is that you have better viewing angles and color representation, but they're a little bit slower in terms of response time than TN and not quite as good at the color representation as IPS. But for general use, I would probably say that VA is probably the best monitor you can get because it's not exactly the cheapest, but it's also not super premium. So you can kind of have a really good balance between budget and performance with that. Next we have IPS. This is in-plane switching panels. Now these are pretty much understood to be the premium quality. You're typically going to get very good color representation, especially if the monitor is specifically designed to be a really good reference monitor for professional applications, such as if you get 100% sRGB coverage space or 100% Adobe RGB, it's probably going to be an IPS panel. They also have very good viewing angles, which is why they're often used in tablets and phones, because obviously you're not always looking directly face on to the screen of your phone or tablet. So that's an advantage there as well. Now the disadvantage of IPS is that they're typically slower in terms of response time than a TN or even VA. So a lot of gamers might not find it to be sufficient for you know professional gaming applications or a competitive level, although most people probably wouldn't care too much about that. But you know, if you're really into gaming, especially FPSs, then you probably do want a really fast response time monitor that is not going to have any input lag, which is going to feel weird when you're trying to control your character. However, that being said, there are some upcoming monitors that are IPS and are pretty competitive in terms of the refresh rates and response time. So I think you know, in the future, especially very soon, we're gonna see some IPS panels that might even be able to compete with TN panels, especially considering the other advantages IPS panels have. Not price though. That's the, another main disadvantage of IPS is that they're usually more expensive because they are kind of seen as the premium monitors with really good color representation for all the professional applications. Now, in addition to IPS, you might actually come across some IPS type panels namely PLS and AHVA. All you have to know about these, not really gonna go into detail, is that they're kinda similar to IPS but can have some other advantages. For example, PLS can have even better viewing angles than IPS. So if you see AHVA, which is not to be confused with VA, or PLS, then you can probably expect it to be at the same range as an IPS in terms of quality. The final panel type I'm gonna talk about is OLED. This is organic LED light emitting diode. And this is relatively new. We haven't really seen that many monitors at all come out with it. Although there are a lot of TVs now that do take advantage 
of this technology. Now the main advantage of OLED is that you get much deeper blacks and shadows with this type of panel. Now the reason for that is because the LEDs when it's black they just turn off completely and each individual pixel controls the brightness whereas for something like an IPS or regular LCD monitor you're going to have a LED backlight so even if the pixel is black the LED backlight is sh still going to be shining light through so you're going to get a little bit of light bleed possibly or the shadows aren't going to be completely black whereas with an LED an OLED TV the pixel is just going to be off and there's not going to be any light coming from that pixel so if there's a completely black screen it's going to look completely black so that means it's going to have much better quality in terms of contrast especially for watching movies it's a great application which is why we're seeing it a lot in tvs another advantage is they have excellent viewing angles and also they have better potential for color range now that's going to depend on the specific panel the individual panel itself and how the technology is implemented, but OLED has the potential to be better at color representation than, I, than IPS is, although the you know, maturity of the technology I don't think is quite there. So IPS probably is still the tried and true type of panel if you are really using it for professional quality applications. But as manufacturers get better at producing OLED panels, I do think it's possible that OLED will become the new premium type panel, even for monitors, even though there really aren't that many OLED monitors that you can get at the moment, if any at all. I'm not even that familiar with any that I've seen. So at the moment, the best monitor for you is definitely going to depend on the application for which you're going to use it. If you're gonna be doing a lot of competitive gaming and you're really serious about it and you don't do a lot of video editing or anything like that, a TN panel is probably going to be your best bet because they're typically not that expensive, but you're also going to get that really high refresh rate and the really low response time, which is especially good for gaming, but not much else. If you're gonna be doing professional applications like photo or video editing, IPS panels are definitely gonna be the way to go. It's tried and true. You're gonna be able to easily find a really good quality monitor, although you're probably gonna to have to pay up for it. So IPS is definitely the way to go for premium quality. For general use, if you don't really need professional applications or you're not gaming, I would probably say a VA panel is a good middle of the road because you can get a decent quality at a really reasonable price whereas you don't really need the top tier, but you don't wanna go with the lower quality TN, I would say VA is a great for general purpose use. And for television, if you can afford it, an OLED TV is probably gonna be your best bet, especially for movies, the contrast and the deep blacks and shadows are pretty much unmatched. So if you can, I would definitely get an OLED TV. And that's about it. If you guys found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you guys enjoyed it. And if you have a favorite type of panel, then leave it in the comment section so we can see some advice from other people. I'm definitely interested in hearing from you on that. If you wanna continue watching, I've got some other videos on the right-hand side I think you'll enjoy. You can either click on them or look in the description for the same link, like if you're on a phone. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos three times a week, so I think it should be worth it. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys, either on Twitter or in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.